Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Julie Mann and I show people how they can live healthy, happy, sustainable lives by changing their habits and using cutting edge products to help them age well. And I'm really delighted because today I'm joined by a writer, book coach and editor, Susan Crossman. Hi Susan. Hello. So great to see you. And today Susan's going to talk about power habits for book writing success. So I'm going to hand straight over to you. Sounds great. Thank you, Julie. It's wonderful to be here. And of course, talking about my favorite topic, which is writing books, something that I've immersed my entire life in. I've been a writer since the time I was a little girl dragging my notebook up into the backyard apple tree to spend hours creating unknown worlds and mythical creatures and all kinds of imaginary scenes in my life. So I'm one of those people I would call a capital W writer. And a lot of my clients are capital W writers. We can't help it. We write because it's something coming from the soul. There's something really, really powerful that wells up within us and we just have to write. But not everybody I work with is a capital W writer. There are lots of people out there who would love to write a book, but it's not something that they were born knowing how to do or feeling comfortable with. There, there are a lot of people with a lot of vulnerability around their writing. And in fact, even kind of the, the dyed in the wool writers that I work with who, who feel very strongly called to write a book. It's, it, it's not something that we necessarily know how to do or feel comfortable doing. And to Julie's point about powerful habits, one thing that I've discovered in my years as a book coach and an editor is that creating habits is a really, really important way to support us towards achieving that wonderful goal of getting your book finished and out into the world where it can do some good. I put those habits into three main categories. There are what I call mindset heart set habits, and those are the habits that revolve around who we are and who we are being in relation to our book. There are practical habits, which are grounded nuts and bolts things that you do with your behavior that support you with writing a book. And then there are the creative habits that stem from the right brain intuitive creative side of our mind that we can cultivate and support and really, really leverage in order to support us with our book writing habits. So in the first category of mindset heart set habits, I think one of the most important habits we can get into as emerging authors is to connect with why we're doing this. The stronger we are connected to our why, the more powerful we can be in getting ourselves into the habit of writing our book, of being motivated to write our book. I, I, a lot of people in the business world are very big on supporting the connection to why, and it is even more important when you're writing a book. If you truly understand why you're doing it, you will be far more motivated to continue through with it, the, the project than if you really don't bother spending much time with why you're doing it. And the why can be something as simple as you just can't help yourself and it's something you feel you were born to do to writing a book to support a business, writing a book to help people, writing a book to share your message. It doesn't matter what your why is, Revisit that why on a regular basis and even put a little sticky note on your computer screen that explains why you're doing it so you remember. Another habit that I like to support people with is to get in the habit of remembering why you are the only person on the planet who can write this book. I come from a body of thought that recognizes that absolutely everything that has ever happened to you has turned you into the only person on the planet who can write this book or the series of books that you have been perfectly formed to write. And that goes back to the family that you were born into, the siblings you had, the schools you went to, the schoolyard experiences that you had, the education that you had, the jobs, the training, the partners, the relationships, the failures, the triumphs, all of that creates us. And as a result, all of that makes us the only person on the planet who can write our books. We own our experiences. They're part of our DNA at some level. And so I invite people to make it a habit of remembering that you are the only person who can write that book. And finally, on the mindset heart set category, um, it, 
one experience that happened to me when I was writing my first book, what is so powerful is a question that we can ask ourselves. And when I was way back when talking about writing my book, my husband at the time said, you know, you've been talking about writing a book for a really long time. And I said, oh, yes, I really want to write a book. I, of course, as a career writer, it made sense that that was something a career writer might want to do is do more writing and write a book. And I really wanted to do it. And my husband had heard this often enough. And he turned to me and he said, what's stopping you? And that was the $54 million question for me. What was stopping me was me. And so another little sticky note that you might want to put up on your computer screen in your workspace where you work on your book is that question, what's stopping you? And 99 times out of 100, the, the person who's stopping you is you. That first book ultimately took me 13 years to write. It took me 10 years to get up the courage to write it and another 13 years to see it in print. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's no shame in taking a long time to write a book. But I could have started on my authoring journey a lot sooner if I had stopped stopping myself sooner and gotten myself together and got that book written. <clears throat> and life was busy like for me. Life is busy for everybody. But please don't let life stop you from becoming the author that you're here to be. The second category of habits that I think is very important for someone writing a book are the practical habits. And one habit that I think really sets us up for success is to make a commitment to a book writing time and a book writing space. Personally, when I'm working on a book, I get up very, very, very early in the morning and I write for an hour and I do that six days a week. And that's six hours a week that I can devote to my book reading, writing. Um, the, the amount of time that it takes to write a book I find varies. For me, it's about 150, 200 hours, but I'm working on my sixth book. For a lot of my clients, it can be anywhere from 300 to 600 hours. That relates to how long the book is, how comfortable they are writing, how much research needs to go into the book. A lot of different factors will determine how long it takes. But if you do the math, if you're willing to make a commitment of even six hours a week, you're going to be able to figure out when you're going to have that manuscript finished. But it takes a commitment. And for me, I think it's about 4.30 in the morning I'm getting up these days to work on this next book. It's not a friendly time of day. It's, I am not crazy about getting up that early. But I know that if I get up that early for six days a week for a specific number of months, I'm going to have a manuscript in my hand at the end of that period of time. And I'll be able to move forward into the next phase which is, of course, the editing and the publishing, the book marketing and so on. So it's a done deal if you make the commitment. You have got this. Just make the commitment to a book writing time. And a book writing space is another thing. Some people are able to work in a distracted environment like a coffee shop or in the children's playroom. Not usually, but you know there are people that can tune out all the distraction around them. And some people can't. So figure out whether you can work with distraction or not and choose your workspace accordingly, which is again, setting yourself up for success. Another distinction to remember around habits with book writing is to figure out if you are a plotter or a pantser. So in the book writing world, some people are plotters and they like to map out the book ahead of time before they write a word. They have the structure, they know what the table of contents is like, they know who's in that book, what stories they're going to write, what points they're making, they've got it mapped out. And something like a mind map is a, is a really good option for people like that. Uh, other people are pantsers. They don't want to bother with all that stuff. They just want to sit down and write and see what shows up. Both are acceptable. So figure out which side of that continuum you fly on. and lean into that and make it a habit of leveraging your success. <clears throat> Pardon me. So for example, if you're a plotter, make it a habit every day before you start writing to map out the book. If you're a pantser, make it a habit to say, okay, it's okay if I'm a pantser, we're just gonna wing this. Now, the one downside I will say to the pantser kind of writing a book is that often there are structural issues 
that show up much later in the manuscript that are going to have to be corrected. So there's a little bit of more time and energy that might need to be spent later when you're ready to be edited than for someone who's a plotter and has mapped all that out ahead of time. The plotters sometimes aren't as creative and imaginative as a pantser might be. But just know who you are and make it a habit of accepting and embracing how you work. Writing a book is a practice, not a perfect. And finally, in the practical side of things, just keep going. Just, uh, again, to the point of making it a habit of committing to your book every single day if you need to. Also understand that the book isn't going to come out of you perfect. It's okay that it needs a fair bit of revision once the manuscript is done. I tend to um, forgive myself for my imperfections. I know when my first draft comes out, it's pretty good often, but it's not perfect. It's a long way from being perfect. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done once you get that shaggy first draft finished. So accept that and understand that it is a process, not a perfect. Finally, my third category of habits is creative habits. And there are a lot of creative, habit, creative habits out there. There are creative coaches that can help you with that process. But there are three main categories of habit that I think are very useful for a lot of people. I do a lot of brainstorming. And with brainstorming, I will just take a pad of sticky notes. And I give myself three minutes. And if I'm tussling with a particular topic in a book or wondering where to take a chapter, I will just write as fast as I can for three minutes, write it on a sticky note, rip it off, do the next one, write, rip, next one. And any idea is a, is a good idea. There's no such thing as a bad idea when you're brainstorming. And then you go through those sticky notes after and figure out which ones are actually going to be helpful that you'll then work on in order to support you with the book. Mind maps is another one. Some people may be create, very creative with mind maps. Visioning. I also do a lot of meditating. I think meditation is a wonderful, wonderful ally in the book writing process. It helps us get into that space where the, where the words can flow, the ideas can just flow. So I highly recommend a, a daily meditation practice, which is one that I pursue which is good for businesses and relationship and book writing and just about anything in life. Keeps your blood pressure down, all that kind of stuff. Um, another habit on the creative side is please get out of the habit of judging yourself. We are often our own worst enemy when it comes to writing a book. We have often all that mind trash telling us that it's never going to be good enough and who's going to want to write the, read this book and who am I to write a book and I, I was very familiar with all of that mind trash when I was working on my first book I had never done this before I didn't know what I was doing I didn't know how to get published well that was with the first book once you've done it once if you choose to go on and write a second book you're familiar with what's coming you also develop a neural network to support you but that first book can make you feel very very vulnerable get in the habit of not judging it just go for it. Just keep going. Just keep trying. Do everything that you need to do to stay committed and stay working on that book, knowing that you'll go back over it and revise it and revise it and revise it. If you want to write a good book, it is something that is going to take some time and take some effort. So just get in the habit of saying, it's okay. It'll get better. It's a, again, as I mentioned earlier, it's a practice, not a perfect. And finally, the creative habit that is kind of sums it all up for me is this idea that I have that we write our book in layers. And so back to the shaggy first draft, recognize that your first draft is not going to be perfect. And it's OK that it's not perfect. Some people it might be. Maybe some people can can download the entire book and it's beautifully written from the get go. But most of us work on our books for a long time. And this isn't something that's talked about a lot, I find in the world today, uh, there are a lot of uh, book coaches are recommending that we write a book in a weekend or a week or two weeks or whatever the short period of time is and off we go, there's an expectation that it should be a book, good book and we get published and everything's fine. Well, in my decades as a professional writer and an author, I've recognized that it's a layering process. So once you have that first draft of your manuscript done, go back and layer in stories. Maybe you're a person who isn't 
so great at stories. I have to work at stories quite often. So when I'm working on a book, one of my layers, when I, after that first draft is done, is I layer in more stories and anecdotes and case studies. And, what, and it depends on whether it's fiction or nonfiction, but making sure there are stories in that book. Um, emotion, that's another layer. Once I've got my stories in there, I'll go through the entire manuscript again and I'll layer in emotion because sometimes I'm, I'm really factual and emotion is something that we need. So I might not do as good a job on bringing emotional content to the fore in a, in a book. Um, the, the setting layer, often what I find with my editing clients particularly, they forget about setting. So they might be describing a scene or they might be telling us what's going on in a, in a particular situation, but I can't see that as the reader. You want to layer in the setting with what are people looking at? Are they standing up or are they sitting down? How are people dressed? How, how, how does the room look? Are there windows? Are there doors? Like help, help your reader see what you're seeing in your mind's eye. Communicate that. Uh, relationships, community, there are all kinds of things you can layer into your manuscript once you've got that first draft done. But just understand that that's the creative process at work. And it's a wonderful thing to go through your book over again, over and over and over, improving it every time that you do it. And if you make that a habit and don't expect that that first draft is going to be the final draft, then you are going to be so much happier with the result. And of course, it's going to make you feel so proud of yourself. And that's about it, Julie. Those are my habits. Hopefully they've been helpful. Very exciting to write a book. And again, as you've pointed out so many times, your habits dictate where your life is going. They are part of your trajectory. They're so valuable. Oh, my goodness. That was amazing. So many incredible habits. And some of those habits, of course, it doesn't matter whether you're writing a book or you're, you know, your why, talking about commitment, getting yourself out of the way, practicing non-judgment. All of that is relevant for anyone listening. So thank you so, so much, Susan. For those of you that this is your first experience with Susan, I'm going to put all her links below this video. So please check her out. She's a wealth of information. And all there is for me to say, Susan, is thank you ever so much for sharing your gems. What an honor to be here, Julie. Thank you so much for bringing me on. I really appreciate it.